but also yeah cheers That's cheers nice. yeah, yeah no dude yeah. i did this thing that you do in your oh, yeah. videos and yeah. my cat came the other day I'm oh, not kidding were you manifesting your cat to come no oh, but he thought it was a toy and i was like this oh. also works what were you manifesting nothing really oh, okay well <laughs> i was just yeah. doing it because you, you do it so well. I just do it. All right, welcome to Millennial Made. My name is Rod, and I have a good friend here, Reese, guy with movie camera. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Reese is literally the most loved person on the internet right now. I, I would, I would say. I, I don't know about that. Oh, come on. Well, I thank you for that. Yeah. But. Um, speaking of, who is your favorite person to follow on TikTok? Oh, that's tough. Yeah. Um, or maybe who was like an early follow that's just like you were part of. You would consider them part of their fan cult. Like for me, it's Brittany Broski. I'm she, like part yeah. of Broski Nation, 100%. She, I, it's funny, like her I didn't follow until recently because mm-hmm. her things I've always just seen and like I always just know she's there and I'll always get her videos and I was like, wait, I should be following her. I know Why? she's there. Because she's <laughs> always there and like I always yeah. enjoy her stuff and I was like, oh, I should definitely follow her. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some ones that I've been following for a long time. I'm sure. Try- Do you know, and we were just discussing this before we started recording, Lily Reinhardt. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I lo- she, yeah, she gets the app and she's funny. And that's so. my favorite. I love when celebrities get the app because I know yeah. some celebrities need to promote things, but you can read through when a celebrity has a social media manager. An agenda or An like agenda. they have a team or you could tell that there's eight people going through each video. Exactly. There's but like no- with her, it just feels not, I don't want to say unhinged, but yeah. it just feels so natural and it. Like, like, I'll just be scrolling and I'll see it and I forget it's her. And I'm like, oh, that's so funny. Like that's Selena Gomez, Lizzo is yeah, the same Lizzo, way. She yeah. gets it, Doja he, Cat. Doja Cat. And I think you can tell us when they're holding their phone like like we do yeah. or if it's on a tripod with a ring light and it's like like lover to death, millennial icon, but Reese Witherspoon, 100%. Yes, but team. you know what? Yeah. I, I, I can like take – I'm okay with that just mm-hmm. because I, I also do know there's the learning curve. Yeah. When it comes to like – I realize this now that – TikTok does not come naturally to everyone. Yep. So, like, you know, this is probably fairly new to her. So mm-hmm. I, I, I oh, yeah. can forgive it, it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But I'm saying it's like you can tell, like, the rawness. You can it, tell that yeah. she definitely is, like, making sure that it looks great. She wants, to, you know, she's staying relevant, which yeah. is important as, as, you know, anyone on social media or in the spotlight has to do. Reese, I'm going to be honest with you. I forgot to cancel my therapy appointment. So that. <laughs> no, that's so fun. Is that okay? Yeah, right. no, this could be your therapy appointment. And honestly, sorry to my therapist. Um, no, this is fine. Put actually, your chair back and I like told my incline. Therapist to and then... not watch anything I do. All right. Thanks for letting me send that. No, um, of course. So speaking of celebrities, you, I, I want you to explain your job. Okay. Yes, because I think this is how you went viral on the internet is, is talking about your day in the life. Yeah. So uh, to give like a, a brief history, mm-hmm. um, I've always loved film. That's kind of the the one true thing I care about. Just really like storytelling. What um, film defined you as a child growing up in Queens, New York? Yes. <laughs> um, I would say some really like monumentous ones. The original Spider-Man mm-hmm. just because Tell that was more. filmed in Forest Hills where I grew up. Wow. Um, so like when I was watching it, I would see locations and it was just – it, I, it, you really feel, um, there's just such texture in that film and the city comes to life and Sam Raimi is a, a genius director. So that was one of the big ones and that really got me into, into movies. Uh, all the original Spielbergs like Jaws, Raiders of the Lost Ark, all yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. And then I'd say the Princess Bride yes. opened up the doors to like older films. And then when I was in high school, I watched Casablanca. From the wow. 1940s, yeah. which is like one of my favorite films of all time. And I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, went to college, uh, studied communications, film and business, and like was hoping to bring the three together. Uh, after college, I started working in reality. I worked on a bunch of shows, a kid show. I worked on Real Housewives of New Jersey for a I, few months. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's oh. So that's one that like I was still on TikTok, but like... For legal reasons, I was not posting Posting anything about it. But yeah, I was on Real Housewives of New Jersey for a few months. My mom that loved that show. New Jersey, yeah, but like back in like Teresa flipping the table. Yes, 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 yes. I've I've been in all of their houses. They're (laughs) they're very sweet ladies. I've heard like no great great women. Yeah. Um, I worked on like Worst Cooks. I did Travel Channel shows. So I've done a lot that Mm -hmm. I haven't shared. And then I went to Maisel. Yeah, I started making Maisel. Yes, Yes. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I made a video there without their permission. 
Um, oh, I didn't know it was out the permission. Yes, I almost got fired. Uh, the video did really well and made the rounds in prime, like, exec levels. And I think one of their, like, the exec's daughters saw it and was like, this is awesome, Dad. Like, yeah, can't believe so, you yeah. did this. And then they are like, oh. Am I allowed to curse on this? Yeah, of course. They were like, fuck, okay, we're not firing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay, so, like, This would be like, remember when the Sherwin, um... Sherwin Williams paint yes, guy got fired. It would be guy. like, yeah, yeah. No, it was exactly like yeah. they would have, yeah. Oh my God, but so, your anxiety must have been so high from that. No, right? it was oh. like one of those high risk, high reward things where I was like, if this does well, like this could be very good. And yeah. if not, I'll have to like Look, take a few steps back and have to restart TV wow. in a different on a different show i think that's the the gen z versus millennial mindset is like yes. millennials would like i hearing that i have anxiety yeah no there was it was like what it is a scary thing yeah. because i knew because at that point i had like maybe like seventy thousand followers something like that where it was like a, a decent enough where it might get seen mm-hmm. but that was my six most successful video to date at that point yeah and then, yeah, it got around, and then they hired me to make more videos and partner with Maisel, mm-hmm. which is really fun. I like mm-hmm. giving behind the scenes. I like giving a look into, like, the sp- – the I always love. And, like, 2004 DVDs, when yeah. you see the special features section, yeah, that was my favorite thing to watch as a kid. Oh, my – that's exactly what your videos are. Yeah. No, oh th- my- and that's – and, like, we miss out on that God, today because of do. streaming, because <sighs> of on demand. And it's, like, what I've always cared about was, like, in the, the three-disc Titanic DVD set – um, them giving seven hours of miniature footage and like showing the creation of the ship, which was life like a one to one scale. Oh, yeah. Like insanity. And like, I want to show that because that's what I wanted to see as a kid. And I just want to make it accessible. That's what my favorite thing about even the Disney, like, um, reimagined videos or, yeah. or uh, DVDs like uh, when they were re-releasing all the stuff on a Blu-ray yeah. like here are the special features um, like the early renderings of like Aladdin and how different he looked insane it's, and like the so variations of the genie yeah. and like all this stuff or like how Shrek originally looked horror yeah. film <laughs> well, he's still Sca- is, I mean yeah. he's still you can make the but, argument like, yeah, he was, but, it's nearly a horror film no yeah. And, and, yeah. really yeah, and yeah. then yeah so from there I got hired by a movie called Not Okay mm-hmm. um, and they were like We've seen what you've done on Maisel. How would you like to do this for our movie? Was so that I, with Dylan? Dylan O'Brien, Zoe yeah. Deutsch. So I run their TikTok account full time. That's you were like a part time job. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, from there, uh, now I kind of get hired to do socials in movies. So to make the Instagrams and stuff featured in films. Mm-hmm. So that's like a post production job. Um, I'll go to set to make mm-hmm. videos like on production. Um, I'll sometimes be a part of production still not as a PA anymore. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, I'll do publicity marketing with studios, um, either for them, like for their accounts, like a lot of stuff I've worked on, I'm not even visible in, mm-hmm. um, it's posted on their pages yeah, that yeah. I'm just like getting hired to do. Cause they're like, Hey, can, can you just like come to set or like, mm-hmm. can you come to our press day and just make us stuff? Because mm-hmm. we don't understand. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, of course. And then sometimes I'll get hired for my own account. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the small history. Sorry if that was too long. No, that's great. And I mean, and now you're going to movie premieres as well. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Red carpets. I want to ask you. I've been to a couple. Yeah. And I first of all, my I hate posing for pictures, and I've always hated oh. it. I've never been good. And but like yeah. you've kind of become a fashion icon. On your Thank own. you. Yeah, you really oh. have. You've been featured in you know like variety and like all yeah. these different. No, parts. it's yeah. it's absolutely nuts because yeah. fashion has never been a focus of mine. Um, but I think this goes to just menswear in general where the bar is so astronomically low for menswear i used to work in menswear yes i get it yeah <laughs> I listened, so from the yeah. episode i listened to oh, i yeah, found yeah. out you were a stylist yeah yeah which is really cool but yeah. no it makes you sense. wouldn't well no you wouldn't no, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah. I, so i forget what you went to what award show you went to that i thought was really good it was either the grammys or maybe the vmas last year or something yeah i went to both of those yes okay yeah. You, it was one of those that I remember mm-hmm. in my head. I was like, oh, this is a good look. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's really cool because mm-hmm. like that's been a, what a lot of people have been commenting on recently. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is the best fit. I'm like, you're paying attention to – but yeah, no, I just like having fun because there's nothing more boring than just wearing a black suit to these things. Yeah, which yeah. a lot of people feel like they have to find a different variation because even I remember at the – a lot of people have critiques about the Met Gala and they're like – the woman served and the men gave nothing. nothing. And men can give – men can give too. It's yeah, like, no. And- um, like um, John – what's his – the artist's name? John Baptiste. Yes. John Baptiste. He gave so much at the Grammys, you know. And like you could, you could still give being 
a man. You know? Yes, there are ways to like, and you don't have to go insane, but like yeah. there, there's so much more than just like mm-hmm. black tux, yeah. white undershirt. Exactly. But yeah, so with these kind of things, I think it's just fun. Yeah. It's like it. no one's there for me. So yeah. it's like, you know, I get, and I don't even really like taking pictures. Yeah. But like, I why not? I'm there. You know, it's, it's like a fun little thing to do. I think it's, it's an interesting transition going from watching them at home to being on the carpet you don't realize how chaotic it is oh like, even though one we ran into one, each other at one the other day yes and it was in this small tent yeah this, it's, like they're all chaos three thousand square foot tent. i kind of like them and i also yeah. i prefer to be what i was there like i prefer to be working them mm-hmm. um it's always very weird to me to walk something because i'm very yeah. in my head very film traditional so it feels weird for me to like walk at like a premiere that I haven't pa- – like I haven't yeah. done anything for the production. It's, it's like, just promotional. It's, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm like I don't re- – I don't usually like promotional things. Like I like being hired by studios and stuff when I'm like coming on like a couple weeks prior doing stuff with them, like press junkets, things like that. So then the I feel art. like, okay, yeah. do you know what? I've done stuff, so like it's okay. Not, it's just a, it's showing, weird, not just showing up and giving a look. I hate and, yeah, showing yeah, up. Yeah. I, there's nothing I hate yeah. more than just yeah. existing yeah. in a place. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. If there's one thing I'm going to do, it's going to be online shopping, specifically from the hours of 2 to 4 p.m., my afternoon slump, where I mark my calendar as busy. I do it pretty often, to be honest, but I'm saving more money now, which is great because I am, I'm always looking for promo code, always on the hunt for promo code, and I found a tool that really helps with that. So imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. So it'll just like scour the internet. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. And I was even, a couple weeks ago, I had to go to France for work, and I own zero linen. I'm like, I should buy linen because I think people in France wear linen. So I used Honey and actually got a pretty decent discount from a coupon that I found. Well, that Honey found for me, which is great. So Honey doesn't just work on your desktop either. It works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your iPhone and you can save on the go. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show, which I hope you're loving. I'd never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash rod, R-O-D. That's joinhoney.com slash rod. Joinhoney.com slash rod. One thing I did want to talk to you yeah. about too is just, you know, working with celebrities. Cause, you know, I mean, we people are like fangirl and all that, but at the end of the day, celebrities are truly people. Yes. And I've even had experiences, and I mean, we don't have, you don't have to go into because I know it's yeah. your career, but like I've had experiences where like I've been set up to meet a celebrity to make a TikTok or to do yeah. something, and then it has completely let me down. And then now, whenever uh, I've like see them or like I listen to a song, it like just cringe because it's like no, I, it, yeah, they yeah. say never meet your heroes, yeah, it's exactly, like that kind of thing. exactly. Have you had a moment like that though, where it's like no, yeah. I try to go into it because like all the stuff I do with like traditional talent, mm-hmm. you know, like whether it be an actor, actress, writer, director. So I want to define because again, like I a year and a half ago, I had no idea what ah, these industry okay. terms meant. So. Traditional is movies, TV shows. Yes. Yeah, so, there's then so, unscripted, which yeah, is reality. Exactly. Right? So yeah, I'll let you yeah, no. Yeah. So like, there's it's really interesting because mm-hmm. like now when I go to like work carpets with a studio, so like if I get hired by like a Focus Features or a Searchlight, they're like, so we have our traditional talent coming in here. We have digital talent, and digital talent will be like people who are on TikTok, Instagram, and stuff like that who have massive followings and should be walking. Mm-hmm. But it's like they're they will not always be my priority if I'm trying to do something about a movie or show. Yep. But yeah, so for like dealing with traditional talent who are like, you know, the people who are getting nominated, the people who are like acting in films, um, I try to go into it knowing that it's a job. So like I've met people who like, and I won't say who, but I had like posters of them as on my wall as a kid. Yeah, yeah. And I like have to like direct them in a video, like in a small little TikTok. But I try to go into it with a very, like, it's a job. Mm -hmm. So I try not to keep get my hopes up and I'm completely I try to be I try to make them as comfortable as possible because I know not everyone's into social media Mm -hmm. um so I try to bring it to them on their terms so even if they're not big on social like a lot of what I do is like the research to how they are on social and like if they even because if they don't like TikTok per se 
but they do like promoting their movie, there's ways to kind of combine the two. Yeah. Because people can be apprehensive to TikTok. And, like, some people welcome it and are super pumped. Like, I did something for the movie Fresh with Sebastian Stan and Daisy Edgar Jones. Mm -hmm. They were both incredible, like, so down to do things. Mm -hmm. Just, like, really fun. And it was a nice break in their day. They did two hours of interviews, and then I'm like, all right, do you guys watch Euphoria? Yeah. And they're like, (laughs) why? And they're like... I just want to get to know you yeah, as a human. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. So that's that's also a fun thing too is like for Not Okay, the a really cool part was the first few days on set. Mm-hmm. I didn't really grab as much. Um, it was kind of just like making Getting, myself yeah. known. And like you have to, you know, like understand boundaries and mm-hmm. everything like that. So that's the most fun to me is understanding yeah. how to work with traditional talent. And like I'm there to make them look good and to make mm-hmm. the movie look good. I'm not there to to sh- like show anything that they don't want shown. Yeah. So it's kind of explaining that process and explaining I'm there to do good on what on your terms. Yeah. That's so If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned Sebastian Stan. Did you see the Met Gala the and I don't know how the pink right. suit. The pink suit first yes. of all. But is that an after party thing or maybe it was inside yeah. the Met Gala? Someone was trying to get a picture of – and I'm not sure how versed you are in this drama. Oh, but no. of Olivia Rodrigo talking to Sabrina Carpenter because that like – Yes, jo- I, I saw that. Yeah. yeah, and then Sebastian Stan kind of it's like in front of the camera, almost like blocking them. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I feel yeah. I feel so bad because yeah. it's an, it's another thing I, yeah. I make sure never to do. Like I will never film anyone without their permission. Yeah, especially working things. Yeah, because they're going there to like lead their private lives, yeah. and they like so much of their life is in front of the camera. So when they're at something like this, the last thing they need is to be worried about being seen. And yes, we could get into like legality. Yeah. Technically, it's or legal they, to film they them should without consent. Expect it. I hate that mentality. But no, it's days. like. Yeah. yeah. I I think and like I get like other people have jobs they have to send in videos but like mm-hmm. I just like dealing with a, just a little bit of respect and morality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> that's good because I mean we see how it can affect the mental health of celebrities too. Yes. It's, looking at Britney, Britney did not ask. For like celebrities to literally like jump on top of her or uh, paparazzi to jump on top of her car. No. But then she's painted as, you know, well, she should expect it. You know, it's just it's. it's I, yeah, no. And it, yeah. it it does. Yeah. It does upset me because yeah. I do think there is like, especially with digital creators, I think there is the extra accessibility where when people bash on traditional celebrities like a Britney Spears or like she's never going to see it. Yeah. Um, and like she'll be hounded by the paparazzi, but she has security. Whereas like digital creators, I feel like their hate and everything like that and like the people coming up to them is is a little bit different yeah if that makes sense. yeah i think f- they just feel entitled to know everything about everyone and it's just yeah. like even i'm going through it now where like people are trying to like hey you like this is part of your life we didn't know you had and i'm like the they say like lying all this stuff and it's like that's just you know it's a part of my life and yeah. it's like why can't i keep that no exactly i i me. don't want to yeah. know where celebrities live yeah. i don't want to know what their I favorite hate, like the hollywood are. tours like like no, this is their house I, and it's like why like what did you get zoo. what did you get from yeah. That? yeah it's like no just yeah. let them live enjoy yeah. their what they make and yeah. however much they want to give yeah yeah take. so what's your just in general i'm yeah. going to kind of Bear with me. I'm going to try to translate this to the corporate world. Please. You know, but you are like, do you like, because at the end of the day, you talked about getting to know these celebrities and they, some might view them as kind of your boss, you know, or like, like a higher up at your company. So Mm -hmm. what do you do to mentally prepare to have a conversation with someone who is at a higher level than you at work? Ah, okay. Yeah, this yeah. is good. No, no, this is very – yeah. So cool. it, I'm just trying to like, you know, no, no, convert no. it. Yeah. So like, <laughs> to, yeah. to like the corporate thing, yeah. a lot of like the people I talk to are people who – are heads at studios who Which are marketing a corporate heads. Job. Yeah. Who corporate jobs. Yeah. They go to yeah. the office every day. They're wearing suits. I mean, yeah. not yeah. always wearing suits. Yeah. But, yeah, no, it is a corporate job. So with them, I do a lot of research. I'll, I'll go through their IMDb's, uh, yeah. where they started. I'll mm-hmm. go. I'll do the old LinkedIn stock. I'll look yeah. through all the deadline articles, seeing where they moved. And also, like, full disclosure, check their socials. Yeah. Because you could see how someone – like – how they post on social or how active they are on social will very much be an indicator of how open they are to ideas and everything like that. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll be hired by someone who's 28 trying to convince their 45-year-old boss that TikTok is an effective way of marketing. Um, so it's very much trying to translate that. And I'll turn on various Reese's 
uh, yeah. to cater to the needs of someone. Because sometimes they want yeah. someone who's like young gun, like smiling, like, let's do this. Like, and they're like, oh, we love this energy. And sometimes they want someone to come in there who's like, so like, this is what I have planned. Like, I'll be talking to their reps and making sure that they're comfortable doing this. And then I'm going to pitch these four ideas. And they're like, perfect. Thank you. So it's very much kind of trying to suss out what you can. And then as for like traditional talent, it's the same thing Mm -hmm. where I try to talk with their reps before and pitch some ideas that they're not going in blind, just like, what is this? Mm -hmm. Uh, And also gauging what they've done on social, how they interact in interviews and everything like along those lines. Anything I can suss out to see how receptive they are to like just conversation, how open they are to doing things. Yeah, that's good. I think that can convert like we're saying yeah like or can reverse it translates yeah translate to the corporate world i know a lot of people i talk to are social media managers and my new marketing job too and it's that's one thing that they're like how do i get my boss to to see the value of tiktok it's like they might already it's like people just automatically have this mentality that people don't see the value of like the new type of social media so that's a really good tip is like go to their socials and see how active they are if they're engaging with things yeah and also liking things but yeah finding things that they'll care about like i i don't think my mom or my dad really cared about what i was doing until like i did something with tony shalhoub i'm like oh that's monk yeah I'm like, okay like <laughs> yeah, cool it's like, so it's yeah he's also on marvelous mrs Maisel. yeah exactly <laughs> or like with like with the oscars where it's yeah. like that is like an institution with a name mm-hmm. so like although they might not understand that like i'm doing yeah. a movie that they've never heard of yeah they'll yeah so it's oh. also finding that with studios where i'm like now that i've done this you can see that this is legitimate. Mm-hmm. This is not just like you're not – I'm not going to be doing the renegade with like yeah. whoever. <laughs> Literally. Like, that's, everyone thinks it's like the, it's, it's a dance app. But it's funny. I went to um, the Adam Project premiere and I was just really excited because I, I love Ryan Reynolds and, you know, I love it. He has a successful production. What you think of that movie? I liked how it was – I mean you knew it was going to happen yes. from the trailer. I was going to say is – you, you yeah. It was everything you – you were knew exactly what was going to happen. You knew what to expect. But – it was just a feel-good movie yeah. that you could watch and not have to think deeply about, and you could walk away with. Yes, it was emotional. I did cry. Really? Oh, yeah. cool. Okay, yeah. I'm not a big uh, movie cry, but it I'm was, not either. It was cute. I'm just in a very emotional phase in my life okay. right now. I'm, like a lot going on in my personal life, and so it's just like anything can set me off. No, anything, I, so but, then it's nice yeah, to sometimes yeah. have a movie. Yeah, like that, so just it was like, like a, about a dad and yeah, trigger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But and you like the CGI wasn't that great. Of the, That's uh, the, the only... young, what's the actress's name? Um, who's also in. Get out. Um, oh, I know who you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. She uh, plays the boss lady. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm blanking she, on her name. Yeah, well, obviously we have to look at that. Now, yeah. But, um, she – I know exactly. I see her. And, but, yeah, like I – that a movie like that I don't mm-hmm. think needs CGI. Like no, I, it's just, for me, yeah. it kind of just – I could have just had the story. I didn't need all these chase scenes. Yeah. It was cute. Yeah. That was, was all cute. I wanted. It was cute. It was yeah. cute. The boy – the boy actor was amazing. He's great. And he's Percy Jackson now. Yeah. Oh, is he really? He's, he see. got cast. If, yeah. Did you know how Ryan Reynolds found him? It was like no. he um, memorized like a nine minute monologue or, or a, a super long oh, monologue Deadpool? from Deadpool. Yes. Okay. I and he see that. watching the movie, if I would have seen this kid on the street just being himself, I'd be like, that's a young Ryan Reynolds. Like, no, he, he was he he's embodied very great. Ryan Reynolds so well. Yeah. Um, her name is, oh, Catherine Keener. Cat, I was going to say, uh, Ka- uh, what's it? Uh, Catherine Hahn. Catherine Hahn. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, jumping back to like Adam what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. I was walking like, why does the person in front of me look familiar? I'm like, oh, okay. So I text my mom. I'm like, my, I told my mom that morning, I'm like, I'm going to movie premiere. So excited. She's like, awesome. And then I'm like, Ralph Macho is in front of me and then immediately tries to FaceTime me. I'm like, this is not how it works. That's like, that yet. what got her is like, the karate kid is in so, front of me in the most basic suit. I, went, like, to the, I went to the Stranger Things premiere yes. and I brought my friend, Drew, who... It doesn't work in film, like, yeah, you know, yeah. so, and we went, and he saw Ralph Macchia, and yeah. <laughs> he's making the rounds, and he was, yeah. like, freaked out, I was, like, oh, because Netflix, like, Cobra Kai, I guess that's, yeah, that, yeah. and I, also, I feel like with those kind of, like, kids shows and movies, like, the, like, older people that get invited will, like, go and bring their kids to be, like, like, cool. uh, yeah, like, like, yeah. I, my, ki- my kids are interested, and I'm still yeah, relevant, still yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 sometimes in life, You just got to make a website and whatever it's for, whether it be your business, personal, for your mom, Squarespace is a really good go to because Squarespace is the all in one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. So you can set yourself apart with a beautifully designed website to engage your audience, to sell anything, and even to see what your audience is doing with your products and the content you create. 
I personally like to use Squarespace for actually two Squarespace sites. One of them is for a business that I own and the other one is for a personal blog. Because you know what? If I want to blog, I can blog. And with the blog, it's it's really cool because I can connect my social media accounts. So you can pop to my Instagram and you can see my Instagram feed. And you can also create email campaigns for your audience to see what types of new products and updates that you have with these email campaigns. Um, within the email campaigns too, it's cool to see the analytics of who's clicking through your website, who's going to your website, who's coming off it. So you can track what's working, what's not, and create an overall better website for your business because that is how you'll get your business to grow, right? We all love feedback. Am I right? Don't lie to me. So if you head to squarespace.com slash rod, you'll get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code rod, R-O-D, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash R-O-D, and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Happy websiting. Um, so we're talking about the Adam Project, you know, it's yes. being a feel-good movie. Do you have any, like, guilty pleasure films? That's oh. like, as a film expert, you're like, this honestly is probably, like, it's got, Thank like, you for eight, the title, it, film it, expert. Yeah, I love yeah. Well, you are. Uh, thir- this is 30% of Rotten Tomatoes, absolutely horrendous, but I love watching every second of it. Okay, so I, I will say right off the bat, I don't think there are any guilty pleasure movies, because I genuinely believe every movie is good. Good. There's just, you have to find a valid reason for it to be good. Mm-hmm. Like, even a bad, even a traditional bad movie can be yeah. good, because I, like, I've seen what goes in, I've seen how, like, I've worked it, yeah. so I, I hate calling anything bad. What are your that, thoughts on Rotten Tomatoes? Sorry, real quick. Oh, and Rotten Tomatoes? Yeah. I think people are getting too reliant on it. Yeah. Um, I do really like, I, that's why I loved old critics, Roger Ebert, where mm-hmm. people would see like one or two reviews in the paper and then they could make their own decision. Um, where I think a lot of times now, critics will, even before seeing the movie, will have like their tweets typed out because mm-hmm. they want like that viral tweet to be like, oh, be ba- dunking on this movie before they've even seen it. Yep. And then they already come in with their biases. And it's the same thing with Rotten Tomatoes. When something has a 32%, you go in like, oh, this sucks. And even if you like it, you're still coming out of the movie like, nah, nah, nah. Yep. Like, critics don't, like, yeah, they were right. Yeah. Um. So I I think it's an okay thing to guide you mm-hmm. if, like, you're going to, like, choose which movie to watch. But mm-hmm. I don't think it should be – it should be a crutch, not, like, a yeah. ba- like the yeah. basis to how you choose to watch movies. Yeah. And this goes yeah. into – and sorry to sidetrack. This goes no, into yeah. a greater conversation about people being able to critically analyze media in general because yeah. – I don't think – I think there needs to be a bigger conversation about how we talk about movies and shows and what makes something good and what makes something bad and people being able to have the vocabulary to talk about what makes a movie or a show good or bad. Because mm-hmm. I think too often people will say it's bad and don't know why. And I think a lot of that just goes to because they saw it on Rotten Tomatoes. I think we – And there's no – I, I would love to know the reason why. And it's the same thing with a movie that is viewed as bad. And they're like, no, this is good. I love that because I like people going against the grain. Yeah. Not for the sake of uh, being contrary, but like because they like it. And I want them to be able to express that. Yeah. I think it's it's so interesting you said that because the media has, you know, have, has so much control on what we watch. Yes. And like you said, critics and Twitter is just like people yeah. people hold so much onto like one person that they follow. It's like make yeah. your own decision for yourself too, you know. No, yeah. exactly. And that's the same thing with guilty pleasure where it's yeah. there's a movie that always and like recently has made the rounds, which is Jennifer's Body. Yes. Which Megan has Fox. been yeah. was critically panned and like it was mildly successful. No one really talked about yeah. it for years and now people are reevaluating it. Cold and, classic. Yeah. And it's it's a really good movie. Mm-hmm. And I watched it for the first time last year, like expecting it to be like because it doesn't have a great. I think it's the, so camp. I think the yeah. Rotten Tomato score has gone up in like over the years. Yeah. Oh, but I didn't know they can change. I, yeah, no, oh, as more okay. critics like put in and yeah. Oh, okay. So it's great, and mm-hmm. it's like a great social commentary, and it's a wonderful satire. And I think people mm-hmm. read it as just like a whatever, yeah. like Megan Fox coming out of a lake movie. But it, it is rebooting so much more. her career. Too. It was. Yeah. It was. It's a really good movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's one that I really like. That yeah. I guess could be categorized as like a guilty, guilty pleasure. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Well, like, if, do you remember the? Uh, is it called the room or room? 
room. Mm, it's like, yes. It's like, oh, hi, Mark. Oh, oh hi, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's a terrible movie, it's but so it's bad. so much fun to watch. Yeah, they and literally, like, James uh, Franco literally. Disaster Artist. Disaster Artist, yeah. yeah that was, made a whole movie about the making of that movie. No, yeah. it was a really, that was also a really fun movie. Yeah. But there yeah. are a bunch of, like, I feel like it's yeah. a lot of, like, mid-2000s, like, comedies and stuff that yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Like Euro Trip, or that are just not <laughs> yeah. good and like obviously very pro- problematic yeah. now, but like bring back to a just yeah. a a funny time and like I uh, posted like our lives on my story the other day about Rat Race. Did you watch that movie? It was like Whoopi Goldberg, um, Amy Smart, the guy who plays Pee Wee Herman. Uh, I forget his name, but is that the one where they're looking for money? Yes. Okay. My favorite guilty pleasure movies are movies that have way too many cast members in it like a-list cast members oh, yeah. and then their plot lines somehow weave into each other that one from so the like get-go, all the love actually movies yes valentine's day valentine's day he's yeah. just not that into you that new was like year's the eve. new year's eve that was a i feel like he's just not that into you was a little bit more like watchable yeah new year's eve and valentine's day are so just like they just like well we'll just get this celebrity because it'll get us views yeah but i love watching those movies because they make me feel good i also do love yeah. uh traditional like shitty rom-coms like yes. never been kissed uh yeah. drew barrymore love so good so much fun so much. shallow hell yeah super problematic shallow movie. hell oh my god super problematic movie it's cute oh. like i love jack black so it's like do you really i i do I, yeah. he's one of those actors that i'm waiting for him to do uh like one of those big roles where like, comedic actors are great actors and it's just like will ferrell a really fine actor and he's done some serious stuff Stranger, same thing with Stranger steve carell fiction. yeah steve carell Dan and in real life yeah, yeah. and yeah. like I, what's it called little miss sunshine uh, yes. fox catcher he he's a very fine actor and i and jack black too drum movie he's yeah there. oh yeah. um trump no uh, Whip it. Oh, Whiplash? Whiplash. That's, yeah. that's uh, that's J.K. Steve Simmons. Crow? Oh, J.K. Simmons. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Steve Crow was in the one, the boxing movie where he had the fake nose. Fox Hatcher. Fo- yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Olympics one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I would, I would love to see it from Jack Black because I mean, we see with Adam Sandler was traditionally like a Jack Black where he was Uncut just – Uncut Gems. And he was literally like – Adam Sandler played himself in every single movie he's ever been in. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he did Uncut Gems and people like, whoa. Well, yeah. yeah. And he also in like the early 2000s did Punch Drunk Love, which is a yes. Paul Thomas Anderson film. Yeah. And he's great yeah. in it. Or was the comedian one? Um, him, Leslie Mann, um, where it's about com- people walking in expecting to be funny because it's about comedians. But then it was more about the mental health of comedians. I know which yeah. one you're talking about and I'm blanking Once on again, the name. Once again, man, I, today's podcast is sponsored by IMDb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do love IMDb. Yeah, me too. Oh, I – Funny I, people. Funny people. Right? Is yes. That, okay. Yeah. Uh, funny people. Yep. I, yes. Seth okay. Rogen, and Leslie Mann. I yeah. am the type of person where, like, when the credits start rolling, I immediately go to IMDb. I'm like, what are all the fun facts? Or, like, yeah. the facts about this? Is like, this, I, my favorite fact, I think, for movies is because I think I'm like, do you know who else would have played well in this role? Is this person? That's my favorite thing to do is like if I know if there's a movie with Amy, Amy Adams and I go to the facts section of IDB, it's like Jessica Chastain was also up for yeah. this role, you know, because it's a typecast. Exactly. But that's my favorite. No, I, li- I yeah. like to I, I just like to think that like 20 percent of my brain is just IMDb. Same. Yeah. Agreed. I'm the type of person that's like I, you know, um, that meme of Charlie Day from Always Sunny. And he oh, has like, he's yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's like, he yeah. looks like, yeah, yeah, Pepe yeah, Sylvia. yeah, 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 exactly. That is <laughs> literally me with IMDb. Anytime like they're like, well, this person was in this movie with this person. It's like, I don't need this knowledge. Yes. I should probably be reading books instead of reading IMDb. No, no, but. <laughs> it's okay. That is my book. Um, my, f- I would say. Kind of going back to guilty pleasures and mm-hmm. just feel good movies. And I have watched this movie so much in the past year. And I think it's kind of the same thing. It's like it's more recent. It just came out two years ago. But it's making like waves was um, Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Did you watch that movie? I know. It, I, I I have not seen it. But oh I my. always get recommended it. And people love it. Oh, my God. It's such a quick watch. It is yeah. so unbelievably unbelievably camp and makes there's parts that make zero sense at the end reba mcintyre comes out of the water Love as it. as a like a water muse and it's just like what but no, it's I, so and good. not everything needs to have a point exactly not everything yeah. needs to have like some deeper meaning yeah. like let me just enjoy this like, there, yeah i feel like those types of movies like were like like you said um not the money, not money Python, but you're talking about Princess Bride. Yes. Like, has a lot of that. It's like, it's, it's very just, camp. And yeah, like, exactly. it's a very yeah. cute movie. Yeah. But like, when Billy Crystal's like, too blatant, like, yeah. it's, it's so silly. But, but it's that's, all I, that's all I want. And like, that's yeah. all, 
Yeah. Sometimes I don't need like sure. a three hour biopic where like I have to do some deep Hamlet esque introspection about oh myself my after. I know. No. Yeah. Give me give me laughs and that's it. Yeah. I think one of my other favorite parts about movies is when they find an, like a not a nobody, but they find someone and that like launches off their career. Like yes. Rachel Ziegler. Yes. Ziegler. She's awesome. Yeah. She's yeah. so good. But like a perfect example of just like meritocracy well she was on broadway i guess just, but she had yeah. i mean but like she was yeah. you know in high school spielberg found her from like yeah. casting and like now she's doing everything as she Literally. should because yeah. she's great she's great yeah and i think that's that's what is like traditional hollywood too right it's like i found my muse in this yeah. so like we're <laughs> and that's julia love, fox and uncut but that's also <laughs> what i love it's like to bring it back to like tiktok and social is that TikTok allows that where it's like, I, do, I don't, my last name is not Spielberg. I yeah. don't have anyone in the industry. So TikTok yeah. has in a, in a way allowed me to have conversations with people that it would probably take me decades to get in the same room as. Same. Yeah. Which is, which is just like wonderful. Like I was ready to do the PA to writer's assistant, to script coordinator, to like to do the whole thing so that in 25 years I can make something. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I'd still like to make something and hopefully I, I eventually do, but hopefully it won't take 20 hopefully i won't have to make a movie about college kids when i'm 50 and it won't have any relevance to me whereas like now what i'm writing still means something to me and i feel like i can say something i think that trend again translates to the corporate world too it's like in any career there's this internal politics yeah especially in the industry i think that's why people don't like tiktok is because it and we were kind of talking about this before we started I recording 50 fucking years there's a lot of hollywood like, that doesn't like tiktok no. because they see tiktokers like addison ray who gets a movie deal from being on tiktok yeah and she is making netflix money but people are watching it and, and she's enjoying it and I, uh, she's honestly not hurting anyone and her it surprised me with how well she did in the role yeah and it's like courtney like, kardashian was the worst part of that movie but yeah it's like, <laughs> but, but also yeah. it's like people watched it, it yeah people it, watched it, it did well for yeah, netflix it exactly. was number one and it's like she's exactly. not hurting anyone and she was opportunistic and i think yeah. that's the issue she too. has a fan base and it's like yeah. she's not take and like i think people view it in the terms of she's taking the role from someone and it's like yeah. no they made this movie for her yeah like this was her vehicle i am at a season in my life where i am seeking wellness joy and abundance in every single part of my life. And one of the big ways to fulfill that is with what I eat. With Saqqara, you can get nutrient-dense meals, snacks, and supplements that nourish your body without ever sacrificing taste or quality. Because if there's one thing I'm going to do, it's I'm going to eat a tasty food. If the food's not tasty, I'm probably not going to eat it. Saqqara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. And Saqqara gives you the tools you need to transform your life with their organic, ready-to-eat meal delivery program and functional wellness essentials. Their nutritionally designed, chef-crafted breakfast, lunch, and dinners are made with powerful plant-rich ingredients that will help boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and get your skin glowing. Because you know what? It's summer. Our skin needs to look good. Plus, it's all delivered right to your door. Easy peasy. Ready to eat. Let's get snacking. Sakara's functional plant-rich wellness essentials help you create a body you love living in. Because if there's one thing I want to love, it's living in this body. From their best-selling metabolism super powder to the foundation, their daily supplement packs, Sakara's products are designed to help support your wellness goals anytime, anywhere. I'm literally, I'm going to shoot you straight. I am filming this from a hotel right now, and I can take Sakara right here. It's amazing. Right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to sakara.com slash rod, R-O-D, and enter code rod at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash rod to get 20% off your first order. Sakara.com slash rod. I ran into this with comedy early yeah. on when I started making TikTok because I did explore. I'm like, I never thought of myself as funny. And I feel like I had had this voice of the corporate world. I'm like, there is comedy to be had here that no yes. one talks about because no one in comedy – other than people who would do it for improv for fun has had a corporate job. They like do it. They know I'm going to be a comedian, yeah. but then comedians were getting upset. Like Michael Che went viral because he went on this big rant. Well, he said he was hacked. So I don't know if I believe that, uh, but yeah. about um, how TikTok is ruining comedy. Cause yeah, these people like, are getting on, like they say they're comedians and they're not. And it's they'll post he, 15 second videos instead of going to like a 2 a.m. open mic. And exactly. It's like, but that there's like comedy's all about the grit and what you have to go through. But then if you look at funny people, look what comedians go through and look at the mental health the take yeah. the toll it takes on their mental health. Yeah, no, and yeah. I'm I'm a big believer in like nothing should be gate kept. Yeah. Like there's no reason for that. And just because and it's the same thing with like 
uh, college tuition where it's like, I paid off my college debt, so why do they get it for free? It's like, who cares? Literally. Like, focus on yourself. Like, it, and all I just want the best for others. So regardless of how I'm together. getting yeah, – Yeah. However – regardless of how I'm getting there, I hope you get there too yeah. in whatever way you can. It's a, And yes, you can say what you want about nepotism, mm -hmm. but – Use whatever you can to get, yeah. you know, so yeah. I, I have no problem with someone who has no connection to comedy, who doesn't yeah. have the fail safe of like a rich family <laughs> to just like quit their job and just do stand up, which a lot of people do. Yeah. So if they want to make 15 second videos on TikTok and that's what gets them their first little thing, good. There's comedians who are now getting big breaks because – they Good. were opportunistic Good. and they were on TikTok. Yes. It's not like I'm not going to get on TikTok because I went to Groundlings. It's like, OK. Yeah, no. And good yeah, for them. Yeah. And I'm like yeah. I'm happy for them too because they're obviously talented to be able to do it that like traditional route. Like that that takes a next level yeah. talent. But I, I hate viewing it in terms of competition. As a, yeah. Because the corporate world goes through it too where, where you know you can't get a promotion. You, like your performance outweighs someone else's but they've been there longer. You know, yeah. Like no. that, that's, and it's the yeah. same thing in like – the corporate world where it shouldn't be viewed as competition between each other, where it's like you should be sharing each other's salaries so that yes. you know you're not getting paid less than someone. Yep. Like it should I, – I don't like the idea and it's it's in uh, entertainment. It's in the corporate world where you have to pay your dues and where you yeah. have to respect who's been there long enough. And I think like the millennial generation, Gen Z and like that – intermediate mix zillennial is like the first real generation who is like oh you're not gonna pay me i won't work here like oh yeah. like you like you're saying this is a great company here's a company that maybe on paper isn't as great but they'll let me have like x number of vacation days x number of benefits and i don't have to like ruin my life to work here just because you did a lot of shitty stuff has come out of the past three years obviously yeah you know, um terrible time in the world but i think it has given people a chance to look internally at their how much more they value their longevity as yeah. a human. Did and, you? Oh, yeah. And, no, continue. No, 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 yeah, and like we, we, I just talked about this in the last filming, but in the corporate world, we're calling it the corporate villain era, where you're just like, my nine to five is not my entire self. Like, my, I can make friends outside of my job, and that's yes. okay. Like, and if my coworker is getting mad that I'm not going to a happy hour that is not required shouldn't be a thing you know so, yeah and so, it's just yeah. and have you seen those the video of those two girls working from the pool like at their corporate job it's gone yeah. viral i probably have okay yeah, yeah. so it's yeah these two girls like 20 somethings who are like working by the pool on their laptops like doing x number of hours making money like just tanning and people are going insane and i'm like like on twitter it's always just like no know, one wants to work yeah kind yeah, of mentality, like it's like yeah. that thing so no. what do you do? Sit inside and just stare at a screen? If not you're even done with that. Yeah. Like, good for them if they yeah. have like if they have duties to get done that have been described by their job and they do them. There's no need for them to be working eighty more hours just because like that's what we have traditionally viewed as like no get your work done and if you want to and if like they want more work out of you then they should pay you more exactly and if like they're at the pool having fun good exactly. there is nothing that makes me happier than the people in charge like yeah not losing money but i am always i'm always for the worker i'm this is turning yeah. into like yeah. a revolutionary yeah. 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 <laughs> let's go all quit everyone quit yeah. their jobs right now um i think i and i kind of build it i kind of submit to this narrative but yeah. the generational war between millennial and gen z but i actually admire gen z's like no like if that's not going to serve me, then why do I have to do it? Yeah, you if, know? You're, if, if it's it, not especially it, my contract, exactly. I'm not doing this because – but they're like, hey, this would really help me out. Pay me more or I'll go to a company or I'll do a job yeah. that will pay me for my services or find someone that will do it for that and see how good the work is. Exactly. I think there's – um, the millennial – career path has also been like wear many hats or like oh you want a promotion well you have to do this extra thing that you're not paid for yeah it's like but i do my job and i i make money for the company so why do i have to do something else in order to prove that i earn yeah. a promotion and they're like promote oh, me that, like, and then i'll do it yeah. it's like oh, i remember working 80 hours and doing the weekends but yeah. like look where i am now and it's like that's I feel bad for you. You yeah. shouldn't have had to do that. Exactly. It's, it's, it's just it's the generational buildup, which we go through in so many parts of our, I know. our life. I'm always but, curious yeah. to, to think like – because I know one day I'll be outdated and I'll have thought, like thoughts that people will be like, oh, that's that's so outdated. And I'm just so curious to see how far we'll come in like yeah. the decades to come, yeah. which I hope we do. I hope we keep going further to yeah, the point where – Yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, Reese, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. That was a really great conversation. We covered a lot of ground. Yeah, no, <laughs> thanks. Film thanks to for the corporate me. world. I was yeah. Say, I, yeah. I, uh, I, th- I think we did a good job. I think I'm, we did a good I'm, job. I'm never. I'm always so yeah. nervous about. I mean, podcasts. you came in shorts, so I think. Yeah, that's no, like, you I, gave I the had audience to what they decency. wanted. Yeah, yeah wait, there we Connor, go. Um, the thumbnail. Yeah, Connor. Exactly. Yeah, Connor um, came in shorts, and I didn't prepare him that as a video podcast. Yeah, Fabila, and yes, he, yes, yes. yeah, and he was like, didn't know. He's like, can we move the camera? Like, oh no, sorry. And he was like, okay. And you just signed like no, it's like I, no, it's very yeah, <laughs> yeah, shorts. It's summer, guys. Wear shorts. I just don't. I'm a big fan of short shorts. Oh, good. Well. I think we did a good job. Let us know, actually. Yeah. Um, you can find Reese on both on Instagram, yeah, TikTok. Guy, guy with a movie camera. camera. YouTube or no? No. no. I, it's another thing going into filmmaking where if I'm going to make something long format, I need it done right. And I know if I get into YouTube, that will be my life. Yes. So I have to, li- I, it's literally restraint for me. I won't do anything long format until I have the budget. That's good. Good for you. You're smart. You know how the industry works. All right. Well, <laughs> no, I do not. Well, if you have any, if you want to watch Reese on YouTube, you can watch him here um, or listen to wherever you find podcasts. Thank you so much, Reese, for being here. Thank Can't you. Can't to have you on again. Congrats on all your success. And you too. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And then we'll see you guys next week.